to start in the home of football, in Saudi Arabia. Um, the Spanish Super Cup, first semifinal. It was a Madrid derby. These two teams are going to face each other three times between now and February 4th, counting the Copa del Rey. And La Liga Atletico were the last team to have beaten Real Madrid in La Liga. I think it was 20 games mm -hmm. ago. Um, but they didn't. Real Madrid won 5-3 at the end of an epic game. And to help us break it down, here's Alex Kirkland. Alex, epic, is that... Is that fair? It certainly felt that way on television. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Whatever people think about the, the format of this competition, the venue for this competition, this game was just terrifically entertaining. I mean, it had pretty much everything. It had some pretty shambolic defending from, from both teams. It had goalkeeping blunders. It had one or two very, very good goals as, as well. And Real Madrid coming out on top in, in extra time to go through to the final. And, and maybe we'll get a Clasico final, which, remember, is what this... This whole competition is engineered to produce. That's what the Federation wants. That's what the Saudi wants as well. They want Real Madrid Barca in the final. They've got Real Madrid in the in the final here. And let's see if, if Barca uh, can join them. Yeah, Barca play Osasuna uh, in a couple hours as we record this on a Thursday morning. Uh, Alex, I, I try to look, when, when games like these come on, I, I try to look sort of for overarching themes and that we then talk about on this show, right? And... All right, stuff that's familiar. Griezmann's capable of moments of absolute magic, which he which he showed. Um, Atleti 2.0 have serious issues defensively, um, especially whoever's impersonating Stefan Savage at the back. Um, Real Madrid do not get flustered. Um, these are all things that we kind of knew and that we saw in the game, um, and as evidenced by Real Madrid getting that late late equalizer to make it 3-3 and send the game into into extra time. What I was not expecting, I had no idea Ferland Mendy was capable of such subtlety. <laughs> or was that just sheer dumb luck? I mean, you saw, first of all, you, Robert, yeah, you yeah. saw it, you played football. When you see Ferland Mendy do that, is that luck? No, that's, that's it's a good bit of skill. He, it, it was the right decision to make as well, because the ball was rolled with a bit of pace into him, so he didn't need to, he didn't need to put all the pace on it, and he just let it come off the outside of his boot into the corner. It was, it was a good run as well. He timed his run perfectly. The pass from Carvajal was good. Uh, yeah, that's not a bit of luck. That's a good bit of skill. Uh, we ma we mentioned Carvajal there. I, I think, for me, he was, for many, I suppose, he was man of the match. I don't even know if they have a, a proper Saudi uh, award for that. Yes. And he got did it. he win it? He got it. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. How is he monstering everybody all of a sudden? He's in the form of his life, isn't he? It's, it, it's, he's been fantastic this, this season. He's had problems for a long time with injuries, and it looks like, I mean, he's just come back from another injury, but generally this season, he's put those injury problems behind him. He's talked about changes to his diet in terms of how he looks after himself off the field as, as sort of improving his physical condition. But yeah, I think he's in the, the best form of his, his career. And you look at his contribution to this game, scored a brilliant goal, was involved in at least two of the other goals, I, I think. Um, yeah, he's been, he's been a very important and underrated element of Real Madrid's season, I think, because of course, players like, like, like Bellingham and Rodrigo and, and Vinicius get all the hype, and Rudiger at the back has been the outstanding defender for, for Real Madrid this season. But Danny Carvajal is, is right up there. I mean, some of these qualities he's always had. He's always been an amazing uh, competitor, really aggressive, a little bit dirty, willing to get stuck in, the kind of player that you need in a, in, in a, in a team like this. He's a leader, of course. He's one of the captains. He's a, he's a Real Madrid youth product. Um, but he's also got a lot of ability, and he's got a lot of quality, and he's got pretty good technique, and maybe those elements of his game haven't necessarily been appreciated so much over the years. And like I say... He's also spent too much time injured over the last few seasons. But yeah, he's been very, very good this season. And, and as we say, he was the man of the match without question last night. But the system suits him th th because he's almost playing as a right winger at times. Every switch of play, not so much uh, last night, but when Tony Kroos is playing, Tony Kroos's pass is always that big diagonal out to, to Carvajal. And it means Valverde is tucking in in the third midfield role. Uh, they don't play with a wide player on the right-hand side. Rodrigo and, and Vinicius Jr. are playing sort of inside right and inside left positions. So the attacking player down the right-hand side is Carvajal. So now we are seeing his attacking quality. Yeah, which I think most of us knew mm. that, that he had from the time at Bayer Leverkusen, but he's, he's had to adjust. I mean, mm. having played also, I guess, for, for many years with, mm. with a proper attacking left-back yep. uh, prior to, to Ferland Mendy, um, he's kind of had to do that. Mm.